What's going on, everybody? Good to see y'all again. Uh, just a day ago, we was all together, and now we're back. We are here with the God Logic Project stream. I'm your host, Avery Austin, who, for those who do not know me, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This is a stream that we do where we invite people to come on up to uh, have, <laughs> have discussions and, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, I don't, uh, maybe you guys might notice something um, about me today. I don't know if you guys might see something a little different today. Um, we have, what's going on, Los? I see you in here, my guy. I see all you guys. Miles, 100. Omar, my guy. Good to see you guys. Chris Claus. Yeah, Ronnie. It's good to see you guys. Make sure you guys, oh, Milo's. <laughs> Yes, there we go. Y'all see it. Y'all see it. <laughs> Y'all see it. Man, thanks to the brother Omar for hooking it up. Hooking it up, man. He and his sister got down and did this. Brother DL's in the house as well. There we go. Yes, that's right. Shout out to the Quran only, original Quran only Christians. <laughs> But yeah, y'all see y'all see the garb, y'all see the get up, man. Y'all know what I'm saying. I would, I gotta turn around and show y'all the back, but it's pretty dope. That that they how they how they designed it is pretty cool. Uh oh, hey, Deidre, thank you, thank you so much. Thanks for the super chat. Um, so yeah, guys, we um uh, Omar gave a blessing. Uh Ike, I see you in the backstage. I'm about to bring you up in just a second. Um, and just let me just say my hellos and uh, introductions and everything like that but uh but yeah so look omar I see people need the hoodie and everything people need the hoodie and everything so uh we will be that's going to be in the works actually guys we're, we're I'm, I'm working it out to where we can get these distributed so that you guys can rock these um you know there's it got the a cool little little design on the back too if y'all can see can y'all see that? Y'all see? So, cool little design on the back. Um, Omar and his family blessed us, blessed us with with this hoodie, man, with this get up. So it's dope. I had to wear it for the stream. I mean, honestly, so it came in last night. We got checked. It came in last night, and I haven't taken it off. <laughs> it's so comfortable. It feels good. The material is good. It's an Under Armour sweater too. So. But in order for us to like be able to like really start some merch, we uh, I don't think we could have the Under Armour sign on it. So that's the only thing. But it's such a it's such a quality sweater. It's so good. So yeah, we're working on it, guys. We're working on the GL merch so that we can get sweaters like these, hoodies, shirts, and stuff like that out in the open, um, so that you guys can be rocking your original Quran only Christian sweaters, hoodies, uh, God Logic apologetics hoodies, and all this type of stuff. So. Um, I can't wait. I'm excited, guys. 2023, man. 2023, Lord willing, is it's an awesome, awesome, awesome year. Um, so, uh, in the meantime, guys, um, you know we're out. What's up, Radar Apologet? It's good to see you. Um, so, so guys, we uh, we uh, we're here. You know, on the road to full time ministry. On the road to full time ministry. JC, thank you so much for the super chat. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Um, yeah, so we're on the road to full time ministry, guys. So, um, moderators, if you can, throughout the stream, as you guys know, uh, we are um, we have a Patreon that we got going, guys. Need as many of you guys can to get in on that so that we can go full time sooner than later. It's doing good. We're almost at 40 patrons already, and it's only been like a month and a half since we since I launched it. So, you know, that's, that's awesome to me. It's, it's, it's crazy. Um, and the amount of support that you guys give is, is outstanding. So, uh, but yeah, so come on and, uh, join, join the mission. Uh, and, and so that we can get God logic apologetics full time. All right. Um, well, so with that further ado, without further ado, let me go ahead and put it across the screen. So we all can see there we go. And then the links will be posted by the moderators throughout the chat. And let's get the today going. So we have um, you got to You got to 
tell me how to pronounce the name too. I don't want to do you wrong, you know. So, um, oh, by the way, guys, as you guys are coming in here, please, if you're on Facebook as well, give a like, um, give a like on the video so this can be in the algorithm. Our live streams have been doing pretty well. Our live streams have been doing pretty well. So, um, yeah, so please keep on. Do not forget, as soon as you get in here, just tap that like button so we can be in the algorithm and people, people can see the video, okay? All right, but so how are you doing that? So how do I say your name, brother? Uh, Ike, you there? Ike. All right, let's see. Wisdom, are you a, uh, oh, you said he's a Christian, by the way. So if it's not a Christian can join today and day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not It's not a Christian jo join day, day, guys. Um, today is for the non-believers to come on through and um, to convince us that Christianity is false or and and that their position is is true so <laughs> so that's what we're that's what we're here for uh icky can you hear me your mic is oh it's probably me hold on nope it's not me your mic is unmuted but i can't hear you at all try try uh try leaving and coming back Try leaving and coming back. Okay. Man, that does look good, Omar. My goodness. That looks good, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. God bless you, Omar. God bless you and your sister, bro. You out, you out did yourself with this for real, for real. You all did yourself for real. Um. Oh, he's not. <laughs> you a Christian, bro? Yeah, I can't hear you. Bust out the shirt, brother. Oh, yeah, I got to go get the shirt um, in the other room. I'll go get it in a second, Omar. I got to get that shirt. I'll show you guys the, uh, the collared shirt that he made as well. It's pretty nice. It's a little big on me. I got to put some pounds on, put some muscles on to fill it out, but it's pretty good. Uh, shalom, Chris Wright. Shalom, shalom. Yeah, Ike, I, I don't know what it, what it is about your, uh, your sound, bro. I don't know what it is about the sound, but um, like yesterday it was working just fine. Yesterday it was working just fine. Yesterday it was working just fine. But if there are any other non-believers in the um in the chat if you learn if you're a non-believer you guys can no mm -hmm. there, we uh, there, we there we go okay 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 yeah. hold on real, real quick i got a shout out al uh he says god bless you gl and bros and sis i need to get the i need to get the cap of radar apologetics in your hoodie bro <laughs> tell me how do i get them Yes, yeah, we're gonna get all that information out. But yes, we need we need this merch to get out, uh, Rabbi. You hear this, man? You hear this? <laughs> uh, but thanks so much, Al. I appreciate you, brother. All right, go ahead. You you are you're a, uh, you're not a Christian, right? I am a Christian. I'm a Christian. You are. Have you been on here before? Excuse me. Have you been on here before? Been on here before? Yes, I've been here before. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a question about the fig tree. I asked okay, go ahead. because when I talk to Muslims and they try to bring up this to prove that God Jesus was not alone, you know. And so I explained to them that the fig tree is just a symbol of Israel. But they still say, yeah, if he if he knew that there was no fruit on it, why did he curse it? And they didn't know how to explain it to them. But so, you did. Yeah, and I, I, is they said that it's written that he was hungry, but he didn't find any any 
uh, fruit. He was hungry. So he went there because he was hungry. And so that I can understand if he, you know. Yeah, the whole thing is an illustration. So for example, so it's supposed to be illustrating the spiritual hunger, right? And then going to the tree that's supposed to be producing the fruit. Now, if you read the narrative, you got to... Uh, because it's an echo. So when you when you look at the narrative, um, not only is it illustration, but when you read it, it talks about how the fig tree showed had its leaves. It had its leaves, and so when you understand why that in detail is important, is because those fig trees, when they produced, when they had leaves, when they had a bunch of leaves on their branches, um, that meant that they produced early fruit called braba fruit, B-R-E-B-A, braba fruit. And so um, it was, it had the appearance that it bore its fruit. It had the appearance of it. However, when he got to the tree, obviously, it didn't bear the fruit, even though it was dressed up as if it bore the fruit. So the whole thing is an illustration. The entire thing is an illustration for his disciples and for the people following him that saw that. All of it was an illustration, not him doing something out of ignorance. Yes, he's hungry. He's man. But none of that was out of ignorance. He did that for a reason and 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 showed the illustration how it's um, for Israel and the chief priests and the Pharisees who are dressed up and are even people who claim to be righteous or dressed up as if they are producing fruit when they don't, that person will be cursed and cast down as he always says. So the fig tree dressed as leaves had the appearance of bearing fruit. And uh, because of that, because it had the appearance of bearing fruit was supposed to be bearing fruit, dressed like it was uh, bearing fruit, but didn't, was, was cursed. And that's how it is spiritually. So it was just an um, um, illustration. Jesus representing God, the tree represents Israel. And so God was like, you know, in the spiritual sense, let's say, hungry for the service of and the servants of Israel, but they didn't, you know, produce fruit. So he cursed it. Well, it's, yeah, so it's not necessarily him being hungry, but the hunger is a, is representing a spiritual hunger. And uh, for them, you, 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 you have to bear fruit. You have to. If you're going to be in Christ and you're going to be righteous, you have to bear fruit and, and in the works that you do with God in the faith and stuff like that. But in, or, or as opposed to being hypocritical being hypocritical as the Pharisees were, they dressed nice, they dressed religiously, they prayed out loud in, in the middle of the streets and, and you know, fasted. When they fasted, they, you know, uh, made their faces look terrible to make it look like they, they were fasting and things of this nature, but they produced no fruit. They produced no fruit. Their works were in vain. It was all just to be seen. They dressed nice. They did it for the appearance of men. You know what I'm saying? So all, that, all of that is what it represented. Okay, okay, I see, I see. Yeah. So you you yeah. were on the, on the right track with that, but um, you know it's 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 very easy. So if they if they try to say, didn't Jesus know that the fig tree wasn't in its season? Because the verse says the fig tree was not in its season. However, the fig trees produced early fruit when they were dressed with leaves. The leaves was a sign that they produced early fruit. So when that tree didn't, it wasn't acting according to its purpose. And it was, like I said, dressed as if it was as if it's producing fruit or had fruit, but really it didn't. And therefore it was cursed. That's how it is with Israel and with anyone who um, is not, who is a hypocrite, basically. Okay, okay, I see. Yep. And can I repeat another top another topic or waiting for I just wait till other Muslims come? Yeah, I'm I'm waiting for the Muslims to come. Um yeah, so 
one question at a time. Maybe next time, I you know, I'll, I'll open the stream for the for the believers to come on and we can all talk and chat. But this one is supposed to be for the non-believers to come on. Another Christian asked. Um, I thought that you were a, a Muslim, but another Christian asked if he can come up. I didn't let him on, so I feel like I'm being unfair a little bit. So, but yeah, so I appreciate your question. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm going to open up a stream pretty soon, and we'll be able to get all these. You can bring all the topics you want. Sound good? Sound good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, perfect. Perfect. Take care, brother. All right. So, are there any non-believers there? And there are, are there any non-believers there in the chat that would like to come up, um, pose your arguments, pose your um, what you might believe is a is the truth outside of Jesus Christ, outside of the Messiah? Is there anybody? I see Muslim by choices in here. He never wants to come up. Um, what about him? We never get any Hebrew Israelites in these rooms, do we? We never get any Hebrew Israelites. We never get any any Muslims. Or I'm sorry, not uh, any Muslims. We don't get Jehovah's Witnesses. Like we don't get Jehovah's Witnesses, but they don't even they don't really talk publicly. They usually don't talk publicly. So, but if you guys are in the chat, any non-believers, you guys can come on up and tell us why Christianity is not true, why your religion is. No problem. And Omar, you were right. I was eating. <laughs> I'm still eating. Mm. But yep, make sure you guys hit that like button. Mm. Hit that like button. Share the video. Comment, comment, comment. Join the Patreon. <laughs> Don't worry about what I'm eating, 100. Don't worry about it. You're asking too many questions. <laughs> but yeah, like the video. Make sure you guys have liked the video. If you have not already, let's make sure that our likes are matching the viewership. Um, man, it, yesterday was a very interesting, a very interesting day <laughs> with uh, the Muslim Bob or Abu Bakr. I had to cut that stream in half. I'm about to post the, the rest of the stream. What's up? I see you, Thomas. Are you a you a believer, bro? Oh, he said he's a Christian. <laughs> I'm a Christian, not gonna lie. Just quick question. <laughs> oh man. All right. Sure. So this is the last one. Please, Christians, after this, nobody else hit the link. Nobody else hit the link, man. This all right. What's up, Thomas? Yo, what's up, bro? You can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. What's going on with you? Uh, cool. Yeah, my bad. I, I ain't know this is only meant for Muslims. I heard you say that after I joined the stream. No, yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's all good. It's all good. Um, but yeah, you here, man? You here? I'm glad to have you here. What's, yeah. what's going on? With you? you said you had a question. Yeah, so I, I wanted to ask you um, your thoughts on uh, once saved, always saved. That teaching. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm actually currently studying that right now, man. So. Um, uh, where I lean towards right now, where I, what I where I lean towards is that um, I, I see verses that that teach that people can fall away, that teach that people who are in Christ, you know, that if they don't remain in Christ, if they don't abide in Him, that the, He will cut them off, stuff like that. Um, so I lean towards. I lean towards, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I can't give an answer on that, but I'm leaning towards like, okay, yeah, it, it does seem like it's possible that someone can fall away completely, you know? So, yeah, I, I've seen, I've seen verses on both sides for both arguments. And right. I know I got friends that argue both sides too. You know what I'm saying? So yep. Yep. it's just like, I, I, I like to get other Christians opinions. Just, just pick their brain yeah. and see what they think. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. So I, when I, I used to actually be like really solid on the one save, all they say, um, I just I just that's just what I kind of was uh, brought up on, kind of, I guess. But that when I started yeah. to listen to it and study, it seemed like, you know, people were able to 
to fall away. You know, I get it talks about people who fall believers that fall away. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, I, I can't just I can't just deny it or reject those verses. So, but yeah, that's that's what I'm studying, man. Hopefully, pretty soon I'll have like a firm firmer foundation on that and be able to confidently say exactly what I believe on that doctrine. But do you, do you agree with me that's not like a sort of black and white issue? Like it's it's um like have you yeah. seen diversity support on both sides? Yeah, that's what I had a conversation with Sam Shimon a couple weeks ago, and, and, I, and that's what I told him. Just like how you came up on this stream, I, I came up, I went on his stream, and Ooh. and talked to him about it. Uh, Sam Sam Shimon, that dude is. Yeah, have you, do you know who Sam Shimon is? Nah, I don't know that. Oh, that dude, he's a beast with the scripture. He's a he's an older, older bald Assyrian dude. He's um, oh. but he's a he's a beast with the scriptures. And so I talked to, with him about it, and he was showing me some verses. Um, and stuff like that because he used to believe in he used to believe in once they've always saved until you know he doesn't anymore and he showed the scriptural reason why and how to interpret that like the other verses in in their proper context or whatever and so that's what he was showing and i was like i okay that's interesting you know so um maybe i'll uh I, I could shoot you the link actually to that video and um because it's only it's not even a long section this is probably like it was probably on there for like 30 minutes, probably going through it. So it's really good, though. It's worth it yeah, if you're yeah. asking. It's really worth it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. If you got that link, I, that'd be appreciated, man. All right, for sure. Let me um, let me do this real quick. Hold on. I can get the link. Ah, da, da, da. Where is this dude at? This bald Assyrian hater. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but to answer your question about whether it's uh like if it's a black or white issue, um, I don't I don't think it's something that would could you know it, it makes a person a non-believer or a non-Christian. You know what I'm saying? If someone believes you can lose your salvation, or if someone believes that you cannot, I don't think that that would take somebody out of the fold of the faith. You know? Yeah. It's just a, a deep doctrinal difference, but it's not. I I don't know. I don't know if it's if it's heresy. I don't think that that would be, but you know, it's just a difference. <clears throat> so let me see if I can find this real quick. Hold on. It's going to flesh. Da da da. Your ministry fire too, bro. I just found you on YouTube like not too long ago, maybe like a couple weeks ago. You know, oh, what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, bro. I, I see the way you be stumping all these Muslims and all that. It's fire, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it be mad funny too. I be rolling on, I be rolling on YouTube, just, just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I really do. I appreciate it. Hopefully, God willing, <laughs> I could, I could do something like that one day. I could. Um, yeah, for sure, for sure. Are you? you 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 into this uh you into apologetics and stuff like that yeah for sure yeah one of, one of my mans he, he he the one that got me into it for real because he because he he like an apologetic fanatic so so he's mm -hmm. telling me about it and i started doing my study on it and um when i try to evangelize obviously you got to be equipped you know what i'm saying so so you got to know about other religions and what they what they believe and what they follow and and <clears throat> how you gonna attack their religion not attack but how you gonna mm -hmm counter they would counter what they're saying and everything you know what i'm saying exactly yeah i'm definitely yeah yeah, yeah it's about it's a it's really about tactics man it's how you it's how you how you approach the situation of each person as well and um you know and how you just uh how you can navigate navigate the conversation you know what i'm saying to get to the point that you want to get to um yeah. but yeah it's really easy it's good so i i posted the link in the private chat back there bro so you click that and you can, you can, I'm not there in the very beginning. You can kind of skim, skip through probably, I, I forgot what, at what time mark I, I show up, but it's kind of early in. Okay. So, but yeah, skim through till you see me and you can watch that conversation. Uh, cool, bro. I appreciate you again, right. man. Yeah. You too, man. You too. Yeah. Stay, yeah. stay, stay and come back and we'll, we'll have more conversations, man. Cause I need to, uh, I need please. to get some insight on this, but we got a Muslim right now. 
I think. Uh, <laughs> All right, peace. Uh, uh proud Muslim, how are you? Yo. How are you doing, man? Salam. Salam. Yeah, I have a question for you. Can can you uh can you greet me with the salam? No, I cannot. Why not? Because in the hadiths it says we cannot do it to kafirs. The hadith says that you can't give the salam to a kafir? Yeah. Why is that? Because you're a disbeliever. So simply that because I'm a disbeliever, you can't greet me with peace and blessings from God? So what, what do you think of the teaching um, in the Bible? It says Jesus teaches not to only greet your brother, but because that's even what the that's what the Gentiles do. They only greet their their brothers. But you also greet, you know, those who don't love you and greet those that are wrong towards you with peace and love. What do you think of that? Well, I guess that's 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 good teachings. So that's a good teaching. So it's a it's a good teaching to teach to greet those with love and peace, regardless of if they're a brother or not. Uh, but it's a negative teaching to preach not to greet those who are non-believers. Yeah, well, the same goes for the Sunnis. They're also disbelievers. Oh, so you're a Shia? Yep. Okay. So Sunnis are disbelievers too. Okay, so can you, uh, you can't g greet a Sunni either? No. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Okay. Um, all right, so before you get into your question, how you doing, uh, is, is Malia? Is, is, I'm, is well. I'm sorry, how, how do I say your name, brother? Ismaila. Ismaila, Ismaila, awesome. What uh what sect of of Islam do you come from? I am Sunni Muslim. Sunni Muslim. Okay, <laughs> this this is interesting. So two kafirs, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. You to, in your case, you you got two kafirs on the stage, man. Are you are you all right with that? For this time, yes. Hello. <laughs> he said this time, yes. Uh. Ismaila, do you consider Shias to be Kafirs? Yeah, it depends on the uh, sects. As for those who uh, do takfir on the Sahabas, I don't see them as Muslim. But as for those who don't do takfir on them, they may be regarded as Muslim, but just bad Muslim. Mm, I see, I see. Uh, proud Muslim. Uh, proud I got I got a subscriber got, here got saying, a subscriber that, saying that you uh you've been on here before that you uh, saying, you've been on here but you're not really a Muslim. You're not really a Muslim. Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? My guy one hundred. My guy one hundred pretty warm. Um, it's pretty reliable. Reliable. I don't know who that is. Are you a real Muslim? Are you a real Muslim? What do you think? Recite Surah Al Fatiha. Recite Surah Al Fatiha. Uh, huh? Huh? Yeah, uh, in Arabic or in uh, English? English. <laughs> All right, my guy. All right. We got a super chat we got from. A super chat. Leave the Christ. Oh, oh. Uh, you, you have to mute. Can, can, uh, I, ask, uh, can I, I, have a, I have an objection? Yeah, I'm going to let you bring yeah, it in just I'll a second. Just you got to, uh, okay. do, you, do you have YouTube open? Do you have YouTube open? Me? Yeah, yes, yes. Yes, yeah, so you, you got to yes, mute you YouTube gotta, because it's echoing through uh, our stream. Uh, just, just mute all right, YouTube. all right. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> so we have Leo Christ saying yeah, Leo she doesn't agree. Got logic. Yeah, it's still it's still yeah, echoing. It's still, uh, it's still echoing. You gotta, uh, you gotta, you gotta mute it. it. 
Got to turn it off. Got to turn it off. I've turned it off. Okay. Okay. Testing, 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 testing. I'm still echoing. I'm still echoing. Still echoing? Yeah. Are, yeah. You, are you sure it's off? Are you sure it's off? Let me check the camera again. He got a muted mic. He got muted mic. He's probably on his phone. He's probably on his phone. I've been on my phone before. It doesn't echo. I am on my phone, but I have turned off the the YouTube. Okay, testing. Okay, testing. Testing. All right. All right. All right. So this was this is what we're gonna have to do. So I muted your mic. Um, whenever whenever I speak, or you know, whenever someone else speaks, you're gonna have to just mute your mic because it it's echoing. So that's how we're gonna have to work together on this. Okay, Ismaili, uh, Ismaila. So I'm going. So you can unmute your mic when you're ready to bring your objection, um, and I'll and I'll be quiet. But yeah, but when I'm ready to answer, you got to mute your mic. Unfortunately. Okay. Can I continue? Hello. Yeah. Can I can I yeah. can I continue? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My objection is about the incarnation. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, because we are told that in the book of Numbers that God is not a man. So if if the incarnation is about God becoming a man, how would you how do you expect the Jews in the first century to believe Jesus as truly God? Because in their scriptures, they have been told that God is not a man. Do you do you think that the incarnation will make sense in this regard? Hmm. Okay. So, so you have to meet your mic now. You have to meet your mic now. Um, have you read the Old Testament before? And you can unmute. Yes, I have. Okay. So, are you familiar? So are, you familiar? are you familiar with the verses that uh, talk about that God coming down in the form of a man? Yes, I have seen that, but there is mm -hmm. an interpretation that I kind of agree with, which is different from the one that it is really God. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to one of these, and then let's see if whether that interpretation is correct or if we can just go with the scriptures and see what the scriptures say. All right, so let's go ahead and open this Bible up. I'm going to take you all the way back to Genesis, my friend. Okay. Go to Genesis 18. Okay. Can you read the? Can you read that for me for the first verse? Yes. It says, and the Lord appeared in and the, and the Lord appeared to him in the oasis of memory. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. And he sat at the door of the hut, sorry, of the tent in the heat of the day. Mm -hmm. Shall I continue? Yes. Oh. Yes. No, okay. Just, okay. Just no, there. That's no, fine. Just there. That's fine. So, so God, this is talking about Abraham. You have to meet your mic. You have to, you have to meet your mic, brother. Okay. So you have so you have God who um appeared to Abraham by the oak tree, right? We understand that so far. Yes, I do. Okay, good. Very and good. so and so we have we have God appearing by the oak tree to Abraham or to Abram at this point, or Abraham. And uh, <clears throat> so now let's see what continues to happen. Okay, so let's keep reading. So it says, verse two, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and bowed himself to the earth and said, O Lord, 
if I have if I have found favor in your sight, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree while I bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you said. So Abraham sees three men and recognizes one of the men as being the Lord, right? You, uh, you could, you're, you're muted right now, Ismaili. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, what, yeah, one of the men actually appeared to be the Lord. But mm -hmm. by the time I continue reading, I find a verse that, you know, proves to me that that is not actually God. Well, it says that God well, is, the one that that God is the one that appears. Yes, that's so, what the verse so. is. But but if you read the, the place that says that the Lord himself will come down to find out whether what Sodom and Gomorrah have done are actually as they are, that kind mm -hmm. of that kind of uh kind of show me that that cannot be God because right. God should have known right. what I don't know. Oh one second. Do, oh, do, you, have second. do you have headphones? Is that what? Do you have headphones? Do you have headphones? Uh, yeah. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. I have. I have one. I right, try. Try. Try I'm using try, the try, headphones try to see if it stops the echo. All right. All right. Hello. Yeah. Hello? Testing. Testing. Oh, this is better. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh man, this is that's much better. All right, awesome. So you said, so it's the verse says that God is the one that appeared to him, and that God is the one that came down, got his feet washed, ate bread, and hung out with Abraham. And but when it, but when he says that he came down to see if uh, the sins had reached. Basically, what what the the cry of the people that he came down to see that if it was so, you're saying that this is a, uh, appearing to put an ignorance on God, so therefore this cannot be God. Yeah, that is one of the reasons, but there are, there are others as well. So let's let's deal with that though for a second. Let's deal with that for a second. Oh, um, all right. In in your Quran. Can you go to, for example, chapter five, verse ninety-four? Because I want to put this in your perspective, just really. All quick. right. We're gonna go to we're gonna go to chapter five, verse ninety-four of the Quran. Because similar language is used in the Quran. Okay. Okay. You still got to use your headphones. Why is there still an echo? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still using my. my All right, good. Camera. Yeah, it's better. All right. So, All right. Ooh, let me zoom in. So, this is chapter 5, verse 94. You see the verse I'm looking at on the screen? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. So, watch this. It says, O oh, you who believe, Allah will surely try you somewhat of the game which you take with your hands and your spears that Allah may know him who fears him in secret. Who Whoso transgresses after this, for him there is a painful doom. So this says that Allah will test you of the game that you get with your hands and your spears so that he may know those who fear him in secret. 
Yeah, I kind of understand this as a future thing which God doesn't want to let the revelation of it come in between the free, the free will of man and his own actual intent. But in the book of, but in the book of Genesis, it's something that ha- actually already happened in the past. So it's not the wait, same wait. thing. I can kind of understand this one as in God doesn't want to reveal a futuristic event that he already knows so that that will not come in between the free of man and the it actual doesn't... revelation. But in the case ah. of Genesis 18, it's talking about something that already happened in the past. So that second. is why I'm... Wait a, wait a second. Yeah, wait a yeah, second. Yeah. So if you have, you have, it doesn't say anything about Allah revealing anything or nothing like that. It says that Allah is specifically testing so that he knows who fears him. He's going to test you so that he knows who fears him. Yes. So he knows. Not not that not that anyone else knows, but that Allah knows. You don't understand my point. If you can explain to me why, you know, in this particular case, I, I, I can tell you why God is speaking as such. Can you tell me why God is speaking as such in the book of Genesis? Of course, because but, here, of course, here, wait, 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 wait. Let, let me learn, please. Let me finish. Because in this case, like I explained earlier, that God is speaking in this way so that he will not come in between the free of man and what he already knows would, that man will do. For example, like if you if you are going to fail a test, if God tells you you are going to fail a test, that will surely put panic in you. So you cannot actually write the exam as freely as you want to, even uh, without being told. So I can I, I can understand uh, the reason why God is speaking in this way here. Or if you can explain to me why God is speaking in Genesis 18 that way, then I may agree with you, maybe. So can you tell me why God is speaking as such in Genesis 18? Well, of course I can. So this oh, okay, is, okay, this okay, is okay, the, but this is the thing that that's uh, the reason why I brought this to you is because I when I bring this to you, it's interesting to me how much nuance you allow for this verse, right? For this for this statement and phrase when it doesn't say anything that you said it says. But I just wanted to show show you the same exact uh, language. That you, uh, uh, let me finish. Uh, uh, let me finish. Uh, uh, all right, all right. All right. Thank you. I wanted to show you the same language in your Quran to see if you will be consistent, because I can tell you why it's a, why God spoke that way in our Bible, which we call anthropomorphic language. Um, and it's and, and basically us, how the writer views God from his perspective and what he's doing and what and how he uh, revealed his actions. Not that he's talking uh, out of ignorance or anything like that, but his actions in 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 the sight of man, what he seems to be doing for us to understand. Uh, <laughs> please, before, please, uh, wait, 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 wait. If, if, I'm not, if, I'm not, okay, I'm not okay, <laughs> okay. So if you have that, if you have that much nuance when it comes to Allah testing believers so that he will know who, uh, who believe, who fears him or not. My question is, why don't you allow such nuance and anthropomorphic language and understand that? when God speaks that way in the Old Testament. Okay, the, what you just said now, actually does, you say if God is using, that man is using this language for God and therefore God is not actually in saying so. I, is, that, is that what you are saying? That it's not God speaking as such, but it is man language. writing. I know, I just want to know, is it, that, is it God speaking as such or somebody is imposing that on God? I don't, I, I want you to be clear on, on it. Is, yeah, it's, it, it's is, it, is it God that actually says so? Okay, so you mean it is not God that was speaking as such. It's a man that is, you know, putting words so into God's mouth. It's anthropomorphic is language. The, the, what's being communicated is being oh, oh, revealed okay, okay, in, okay. in an anthropomorphic... Hold on, you're not listening. Oh, what's being okay. revealed this is being revealed in an anthropomorphic way according to our Bible, and we have a lot of these examples like this. Do you, right, do, okay, you have, do, do you have the... When you have the same type of language that's spoken, where Allah says that He He's doing no, things, so that he I will know actually that. believe. I actually is believe that Allah is speaking. No. I actually, I actually believe Allah is speaking that way, and we I have given we, we a we good wait, 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 and I give, and I give a good reason for why He's speaking as such. But in your case, the, the 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 reason you are giving me, you are like saying it is it is a man putting words into God's mouth. And uh, that That's kind of I like said. I said, the understanding oh, is through at the what's being communicated oh, is anthropomorphic language. Do you, oh, okay, do you okay, 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 no problem. Okay, okay so can I go to the second point? Pause, pause for a second. Pause for a second. 
So in okay. here, so since, there, since there's no nuance with, with that in the Old Testament, this is the reason why I brought you this verse. When it says that Allah will test the believers so that he will know who fears him, does that mean that Allah himself did not know who feared him before he tested? Can I come on? Please, answer the question. Yeah, uh, yeah, he knows, and I, I, I can understand why he's speaking as such. Okay, so where, where do you get it from that he's speaking as such when it says that because, so Allah may know that who fears because, him? Because, can I, can I come on? I paused so you Hello? can comment. Hello? We can hear you. Hello? Okay, so the reason why it is, he's speaking as such is because, like I told you earlier, if he made known the future to all men, that, that will actually like, uh, like uh, influence our free will. If, if, if God should reveal the future for man, it will actually you know, influence our free will. Like we will not do what we want to do actually, like from ourselves. So I can understand why God is speaking as such in, in here. But the reason you are giving me in, as for Genesis 18, you are like, say, okay, it is a man putting words in some God's no mouth. Sense. What you just huh? what you just said, you just what you just said, you just made that up. That and it doesn't have anything to do with what we just read. What does man's no, free it, will it, it has to do with oh excuse me? What does man's yeah. free will have to do with Allah knowing who fears him or not? Okay, let me give you an example. Can I go on? Okay. okay. For example, when God sent Moses to Pharaoh, yeah, God did not tell Moses that Pharaoh would not listen in the Quran. Allah says he should go and preach. Perhaps Pharaoh may repent, but in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, we are told that uh, God already told Moses that Pharaoh would not believe. So if Moses goes to Pharaoh, in the case of the Bible, Moses would not have that zeal to preach in order to convince Pharaoh. Well, as for the correct narrative, I can understand that if Moses goes to Pharaoh, he will preach with the zeal that maybe Pharaoh would repent. So, you see, when God told Moses the future in the Bible, Moses, that would actually influence Moses' way of approaching Pharaoh. That is my whole point. That if but God should see, reveal wait, the future, wait, 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 wait. let me laugh. That's let, another let, false please. analogy and another false comparison. Let, let me laugh. Because please. you don't have, can you I, do not have. Can I finish? Can, can I finish? No, can, can I finish? I, have, I haven't finished. Right. No, yeah, then let me finish. Wrong. Maybe you come on it. You went off on something else that I didn't. Let me finish. And you bought a false analogy. No, let me finish. You false analogy, so we have to address it. Just pause a second. Oh my goodness. Just pause a second. You know, I I allow you to to finish. I allow just, you to just finish, but you're not allowing me to finish. Just pause a second. You said that in the Bible, Moses uh, basically um, had some type of, had a least incentive to preach to Moses uh, the word that God told him to preach. Where do you find in the Bible where that happened? Because in the Bible, God already told Moses that Pharaoh wouldn't believe, even if he preached to, to Pharaoh. So That's not the what question. is the essence? So, 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 what is the essence of preaching to Pharaoh if God will have told Moses that he wouldn't believe? Or well, he tells you, he says, well, "I harden his heart for my glory, so that I may use him as a tool to show my glory." He tells him that. Oh, so now you are saying it is God so, that actually hardened Pharaoh. Wait, 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 wait. That, that's exactly what so that's exactly wait, 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 that's wait, wait, exactly wait, 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 are you, you, are you saying Pharaoh? Are you saying Pharaoh was innocent? So I muted you. It was I'm muting you because you. I'm muting you because you keep talking over me and you don't know how to listen. You brought an argument. I just answered two of your questions. I need you to at least answer one. Where in the Bible does it say that Moses showed resistance in preaching to Pharaoh? Whenever he preached to, to Pharaoh, he had least incentive because he knew that he would not repent. Because he knew that his heart uh, his heart was hardened. Where does that say that in the Bible? You can unmute your mic now. Please answer the question directly. 
Hello? So again, as I speak, please let me finish. Otherwise, you are not allowing me to make my point. So again, now that you said that it was God that hardens Pharaoh's mind for him not to believe, then what is the essence of preaching to Pharaoh? That means Pharaoh has no, 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 no fault, if that is what you will say. So again, my point is, if God should reveal the future for man, it will definitely affect how man approaches that thing with his free will. That is my point. Hello? Hello? You're, you're finished? Because I want to make sure that you're so, done so I can oh, ask you my oh, question. All right, again. all right. All right. So, you so said hello. Again, Are you done? With, so I can interject oh, now? Oh, oh, okay. okay, no. Let me, let me finish. So again, so I, you I asked me... you a direct question. Do you remember the question I asked you? Yeah, I, I remember. What was the question? That I should tell you where is it that Moses was kind of feeling less uh, I mean, having less in incentive to preach to Pharaoh, right? Is that yeah, thank you. That, so please that answer question? that directly. Where is that in the Bible? Because he already knows. He already, this is no, no, common no. psychology. Wait, wait. Can you show this, me this is no, where it says that? this is common psychology. This is a common psychology, uh, Mister. This is a common psychology. Up, so yeah, there. It, it it is psycho it's common psychology. If if my already okay for for example, like if you know that you fail an exam, it's, it's smell, it's smell. Wait, 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 wait. Smell, smell. If you know, it's, it's wait, smell. wait, if you wait, wait, wait. Oh my goodness, it's smell. It's smell. If you are told you will fail, I'm, I'm gonna you give you one more exam. chance. I'm gonna give you one more chance. I'm gonna give you one more chance. Do not tell me. Oh, it's common sense. Do not tell me everybody knows this. Don't tell me that. Show me the verse. You understand this? Show me the verse that says Moses had least less incentive to give the word that God gave to him to say to Moses. Show me the verse where it says that because he already knew that his heart was hardened. Show me the Thank verse. You. Admit, Thank you. I wish it's not there and you made it up. If okay. not, I'm not can I, out of somebody else. Can I come on? Comment on the question that I asked you specifically. All right. Thank you. I don't there is no place there, but you yourself Thank you, you. Will impose Thank you. wait wait Thank wait. You. Let, let me finish. Let me finish, Thank please. You. you said it let enough. Me finish, please. You let me finish, enough. please. There oh, is no 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 no, no 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 please let me finish, please. Can you I finish? made it up? Can I finish, please? At least. No, no, no. Can I finish? Answer the question directly. Now let at me least, make my at, point. At, no, 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 no. Let me, let me see, make my point You're not allowing me to finish. You're not allowing me to finish. Let me make my point now. Please let me finish. Please, please. Let me make my point now. I'm meeting you because you can't, you can't listen. Let me make my point now. You lied about the Bible saying in the Bible it shows that Moses had least in, less incentive to, to preach to Pharaoh because he knew that his heart was hardened already. You lied. And so now you finally admitted that there is no verse that says that in the Bible. You made that up. So you don't have a point in bringing up this comparison saying, well, look, in the Quran, it says that Allah said, perhaps, maybe Pharaoh might repent if you preach to him. No, that's again showing Allah's lack of knowledge according to your hard rendition of the verses. If in Genesis, there's no nuance. If in Genesis, there's no nuance to when God said, I came down to see if the sins was as the people cried about. And then, and you can't accept that that's anthropomorphic language, not meaning that he's not speaking in ignorance, but he's speaking anthropomorphically. If you can't, under, if you can't accept that nuance to that, then you have to accept in your Quran when Allah says that perhaps maybe, maybe Pharaoh would, um, would repent. You have to say, oh, well, God doesn't know. He's, he's a God of maybes. Or when, when we have here, for an example, where Allah tests the believers so that he will know who fears him. That means that Allah didn't know who feared him before he tested them. This is what you have to do. Stop making up arbitrary comparisons, lies about other scriptures, either deal with, accept the nuance and be consistent or say, you know what? We both have a problem here. Okay. Can I come on, please? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. You see, when you told me when you told me that it is an anthropomorphic uh, in Genesis 18, I never asked you to show me the verse that says anthropomorphic. I never instead that you should tell me because 
if I should do the same, you'll be guilty of the same thing you are accusing me of now. Yeah. So if you are consistent, show me in Genesis 18 where it says that language is is anthropomorphic and it's not God saying such thing. I dare you to show me that as well. Over to you. So you're showing that you completely misunderstood what I said. When, when I said that he's this is anthropomorphic language, figurative language and anthropomorphic language. Where does it say so? Where does it say so? so where does it say so in the book of Genesis? Me off, bro. Don't cut me off or I'm, I'm sending you out of here because I don't have patience for, for, for you and your, your dumb arguments. I don't have patience for it. So <clears throat> I gave you your mic in time. So when I say that this is allusion to to the type of uh, of illusion uh, 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 language that's being presented and the illustration that's being presented and how God is talking, with you <clears throat> saying no, that's not how it is. That's not the figurative language that or structure of the language that's being used here. I don't. I'm not saying that. Oh, when you go to a compare in the scripture, look at here. This happened versus this happening. I, so when you say when you say something like that, I'm like okay. Show me in that scripture where it says that happened. That's a, you're, it's a false analogy, a false comparison again. I don't have to say, uh, if, if, for example, it says God is a man of war. That's figurative language. God is, God uh, is a man of war. Okay, 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 okay. Um, let's, let's move on to our points. All right. I told you. I let you speak. You want to keep coming off the mic? You don't, you don't get no time. But this is to show you how inconsistent the Muslims are. How inconsistent the Muslims are. All of a sudden, when you read Genesis and God comes down in the form of a man, gets his feet washed, eat with, eats with Abraham, and says, I came to see if the, if the cries match the sin and stuff like that. <clears throat> you can't accept that that's anthropomorphic figurative language in God and, and, the, and the illusion from the understanding of man and how that's being presented. But when it comes to Allah saying, I'm testing the believers so that I'll know who fears me or that go preach to Moses and maybe he'll repent. Oh, all of a sudden there's nuance to that. All of a sudden, that's not how it is. All of a sudden, that's not how it is. Come on now, guys. Come on now, guys. Be consistent. Be consistent. It's as simple as that. Be consistent. Are there any? Is there anybody else I would like to come up and actually have a decent conversation? You're more than welcome. Hopefully, you do better than the last clown. Also, if you haven't already, please leave a like on the video. Please leave a like on the video, guys. All of you who are under the sound of my voice, please leave a like. We got 240 something folks in here. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and make sure that the likes match up with the views. Let me check here. But the link is into this is in the description if you are a non-Christian to come on up and <clears throat> to come on up and uh, have a discussion. But this is what's also funny, guys. This is what's also funny. This is what's also funny. This man was talking about the free will of man, about God infringing on the free will of man. How in the world as a Muslim do you believe in the free will of man? Are you silly? How, as a Muslim, do you have a problem with God infringing on the on free will of man? Let's take a look at this real quick. Let's take a look at this real quick. Every objection that you guys bring up, you bury your you bury your religion, you bury Islam. You guys bring up arguments that are so inconsistent that cannot stand scrutiny, that if the same question was applied to you, you would have to drop Muhammad and drop Allah, the God of maybes and perhaps, the God of testing so that he can know. Let's see, let's, let's see. So he had, he, he had a problem with Allah or with God um, infringing on 
the free will of man. Man has free will according to Islam. Man has free will, period, according to reality, is what uh, our friend had, what would have us to believe. Let's see here. Let's have some fun with this stuff. Let's have some fun with this stuff. Sahih Muslim, 2658. Does man have free will in Islam? <laughs> Look here. Look where we're going to go. We're going to go to the Book of Destiny, ladies and gentlemen. You guys ready for this? The Book of Destiny. The Book of Destiny. 2658. Let's see what we have here. Free will in Islam. Oh, here we go. Sahih Muslim. It's Sahih, ladies and gentlemen. Abu Huraira reported Allah's messenger is saying, Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in. And guess what? There would be no escape from it. Free will? Allah has fixed the very portion, the very portion of adultery, <laughs> adultery, which a man will indulge in. There would be no escape from it. The adultery of the eye is the lustful look. The adultery of the ears is the listening voluptuously. And uh, the, the adultery of the tongue, uh, licentious speech, and the adultery of the hand, the lustful grip. And the adultery of the feet is to walk where he intends to commit adultery and the heart yearns and desires which he may or may not put into effect. But guess what? It's not It's not him. It's not his fault. Allah fixed. Allah fixed the, the amount of adultery that that man must commit, that he will indulge in, and he cannot escape from it. Free will? How you doing, Benji? I see you in the back. Are you uh are you a Muslim? You uh, I can't hear you. You got to put it uh put it in the chat for me so I, so I can know. I have to uh, yeah put it in the private chat. Let me know if you're a uh, a Muslim or a Christian or whatever. You're a Christian, okay? Yeah. So this 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 stream is for uh the the non Christians, brother. The stream is for the non Christians to join up, okay? I'm trying to have uh try to have engagements with the non-Christians. <clears throat> so, but next, but next time, come on to the stream. Next time, I'll have a stream where I where I allow the Christians to come on and join. Okay. All right, for sure. Keep the keep the notifications on. Let's keep having some fun with this stuff. All right, God bless you. All right, we got a super stick from Deidre. Thank you so much, sister. Thank you, thank you. Well, look, guys. This is Sahih Muslim for anybody who wants it. 2658. Sahih Muslim, 2658. Allah has fixed the amount of adultery that a man must commit. He wants you to sin. Free will. Free will. Let's keep going. The Book of Destiny. Isn't that ironic? Let's keep going. <clears throat> Let's see what we find here in the book of destiny. Let's see what we find here in the book of destiny. Sahih Muslim 2662C. It says, Messenger. Okay, here we go. Aisha, the mother of the believers said that Allah's messenger was called to lead the funeral prayer of a child of the Ansar, a kid, a little boy. I said, Allah's messenger, this is Aisha speaking, there is happiness for this child who is a bird from the birds of paradise, for it committed no sin, nor has he reached the age 
when one can commit sin. Watch what Muhammad responds with. So Aisha thinks he's going to paradise. He didn't commit no sin. He didn't commit sin or whatever. He, he wasn't even, hasn't reached the age where he can commit sin. Muhammad says, Aisha, peradventure, it may be otherwise. Stop it, Aisha. Stop. It may be otherwise because God created for paradise those who are fit for it while they were yet in their father's loins. And he created for hell those who are to go to hell. Watch this. It even gets even more clear. But maybe there's some nuance to this. He created them for hell while they were yet in their father's loins. What free will? What free will? What free will? I'm lost. Somebody help me. I'm a little lost. I'm a little lost. So Ismaila, if you have a problem or have any inclination of a problem, of God infringing on man's free will, leave Islam today. Leave Islam today. Leave Islam today. <laughs> right, 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 right. It's common sense. It's common sense. Incredible, man. These guys are incredible. I'm not done, though. I'm not done. Y'all thought I was done. Let's go to another one. Free will, ladies and gentlemen. Free will. We all know the Adam one. Free will. Oh, this is good. This is a good one. 2646. Let's keep going. Sayyid Muslim 2646, the book of destiny of all places. Aha. Here we go. Sahih Muslim 2646. <clears throat> it says, Anas bin Malik reported directly from Allah's messenger that he said, Allah, the exalted and glorious, has appointed an angel as the caretaker of the womb. And he would say, my Lord, it is now a drop of semen. My Lord, it is now a clot of blood. Interesting science there. <laughs> My Lord, it has now become a lump of flesh. And when Allah decides to give it a final shape, the angel says, My Lord, would it be male or female? Would, it be, would he be an evil or a good person? What about his livelihood and his age? And guess what? It is all written as he is in the womb of his mother. So wait a second. All of the actions, whether he'll be good or bad, male or female, what he will do, his deeds, if they're good or bad, is written for him already or her. What free will? How you doing, my friend? Hello, can you hear me? You're uh, you're on the stage. You're on the stage. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Can you try to say something? Your mic is unmuted. I don't know what's going on. Maybe uh, try try to leave and then come back. Try to leave and come back. It worked for somebody somebody else. So try to leave and come back. Can you hear me? Uh, mute mute and unmute your mic if you can hear me. So yeah. Yeah, try to uh, try to come back. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you out, but try to come back. Let's keep going. Let's keep it going. <laughs> right. Let's hear more free will. Let's keep going. <clears throat> so you have what is written, stuff that is written for him before he even does them or has the free will to do them. Not, now, let's get this straight. Not that it's in Allah's foreknowledge. Not that he, because he's all knowing, knows what the person's going to do. And that person just does that as his free will. No. Allah has a script. He writes a script, writes the lines you will say, writes the actions you will do. It's all written for you while you're in the womb. He's an author and you're a character in the story that he writes a script for. It's a script. Not that he just knows. It's not his foreknowledge. This is predestination. This is this is determinism. All right, he's back. All right. Can you hear me? Your, your mic is muted at the moment. Okay, so you can hear me. Try to say something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, my friend. I don't know. Are you using headphones or or something? It's not working though. It's not working. All right. In the meantime, we're going to share some more free will of Islam. Let's share some more free will of Islam. Let's see here. Where's my, did I lose my favorite one? We know the Adam one. We always use the Adam one. Where's my favorite one at? Ah, here it is. 43. All in the book of destiny. Watch this, y'all. Let's let's read some more free will. More free will, more free will. Sahih Muslim 2643. Watch this. The book of destiny, the book of free will, y'all. Abdullah bin Masood reported that Allah's messenger, who is the most truthful of the human beings and is being truthful and his being truthful is a fact said so ibn masood this is what uh he said that muhammad says so muhammad speaking verily your creation is on this wise so this is how you are created the constituents of one of you are collected for 40 days in his mother's womb in the form of blood after which it becomes a clot of blood in another period of 40 days. Man, this uh, embryology is amazing. Then it becomes a lump of flesh. And 40 days later, Allah sends his angel to it with instructions concerning four things. So the angel writes down. What does he write? So the angel writes down his livelihood. His death, his deeds, his fortune, and his misfortune. So Allah sends the angel to write the script for each character, and he writes down your deeds, what you're, at, what you're going to do. He writes it down. These are the actions that you are going to do. He writes them down for you before you do them. It's a script. Let's keep going. Let us keep reading. Okay? By him, besides whom there is no God, that one amongst you, that one amongst you acts like the people deserving paradise, right? Until between him and paradise, there remains but the distance of a cubit. When he suddenly, when suddenly, the writing of destiny overcomes him. Look at that free will. And he begins to act like the denizens of hell and thus enters hell. What? Wait a second. It's, it's Myla. The free will, right? So a person 
is doing the deeds, acting in accordance to one who will go to paradise. Acts like the people deserving paradise until so he's so good that there's only a cubit between him and paradise. Just a cubit. He's right there. But then suddenly, out of nowhere, the writing of destiny overcomes him. And he begins to act like, not because of his own free will, but because the writing of destiny overrides him, overrides his free will. And then he begins to act like those who will go to hell and thus, because of it, goes to hell and vice versa for the one going to paradise. He acts like he's, he's the person of hell. Then when Allah wrote for him, overcomes him, and then he goes to paradise because he starts acting like people who deserve paradise. Look at all this free will in Islam. This is the free will in Islam. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. This is the free will in Islam. So if you have a problem, Mr. Muslim, Mrs. Muslima, if you have a problem, With the, with, the, with the idea of God infringing on man's free will, leave Islam. Throw it away. Get rid of Muhammad. Get rid of Muhammad. Because it ain't about foreknowledge anymore. It's about him writing the script for you. It's tough. Is there any Muslim in the chat or a non-Christian? Non a non-Christian in the chat? You don't even necessarily have to be a Muslim. A non-Christian in the chat that would like to come up and have a conversation. Uh, we could talk about anything in Christianity or your beliefs or whatever. You're more than welcome to come up. In the meantime, guys, please like the video. Please like the video and consider uh, becoming a patron. Guys, we're really moving good uh, with the Patreon. So those who, you know, uh, if you, you know, it's on your heart, please join the $10 tier or join the $20 tier. We also have a $50 tier or $100 tier and the perks that come with that kind of stuff. You guys can request specific videos or topics that you want me to talk about, and I will work on that and do that and produce that for you. Um, but yeah, we're trying to get on full-time ministry, guys, where we can do this every single day, where we can do this every day, where we can get out some God Logic merch and all this kind of stuff, man. 2023 is the year um, that we are, we're gonna explode in a different way. We're going to explode in a different way. So uh, please become uh, consider becoming a patron. Also, for those um, who like, you know, just like to give, maybe don't want to do a Patreon, but um, just like to give, please continue to give through PayPal. My PayPal link is in the my description of every video. Um, uh, my cash app is there and also my Zelle, you know, uh, the, all those ways are, are, are in my description. So please, for the people who give through PayPal and stuff like that, do not stop. That that helps me greatly because I don't have to wait a month to receive that. It goes straight to me. So, yeah. Um, all right, my friend, you're back. Yeah, can you uh, say something in the private chat? Say something in the pri yeah. So you, you are speaking. Say something in the private chat. Let me know what the problem is. Because uh, I can't hear you. You're not audible. You're not audible, my friend. <laughs> DJ says, I can't believe Allah is making me give to God. <laughs> uh, Allah made DJ give to a kufar. Stupid. <laughs> yeah, so I, I see you in the chat, bro. I see I see all of that, but it's just not 
You're not audible, man. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's your if you're on your phone, it's your device. But yeah, that's tough. It's all right. Uh, but if there are no more, if there are no more takers, I'll wait a few minutes to see if he can get it together. If there are no more other takers, then guys, you're more than welcome um, <clears throat> to come up with a question. Christians, you guys can come up with a, if you have a question that you guys wanted to share or ask, something like that. <laughs> Chris Claus. <laughs> oh, man. It's easy, man, to write with two right hands. You just write with one of them. Come on, it's common. It's it's common sense. One hundred. It's common sense. It's common sense. But this is the type of stuff we're dealing with, guys. We're dealing with inconsistent arguments. Now, if now, ultimately, the reason why we went to those verses in Genesis is because he said that um, there was a problem with the doctrine of the incarnation because this wasn't taught in the Old Testament, God becoming a man. God is not a man in the Old Testament. So how could, why would they believe that he is a man in the New Testament when, when Jesus comes on the scene? Well, that's because the Bible foretold that God will come as a man. And it gave you snippets and pictures of God coming as a man, appearing on earth as a man and things of this nature. So you already, they're already prepared for it. It's in the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? Here's one of the scriptures that I love to share. One of the scriptures I love to share. Zechariah. Zechariah 12.10. Right, ladies and gents. Zechariah 12.10. Watch this. God says, and I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy so that when they look on me, on him whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and weep and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a first born. This is God speaking. This is God saying that Jerusalem, Israel, will look on him on that day. Look on me, whom they have pierced. God getting pierced. Wow, I wonder when that happened. I wonder when God got pierced. Clearly, allusion to the incarnation. All right, we have so many of these. So many of these. So many of these. Y'all know one of our favorites. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end in the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from the time forth and forevermore. The zeal of Yahweh of hosts will do this. The son to be born is identified as the mighty God and the father of eternity. The one who is the source of eternal life. Where do we find this? Very next chapter, very next chapter. All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all know this. Very next chapter, Isaiah 10, 20 and 21. In that day, there it is again, the remnant of Israel and the survivors of the house of Jacob will no more lean on him who struck them, but lean on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. A remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob to the mighty God. So here we have Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, who is the mighty God. And previously in the, in the previous chapter, 
The son to be born is identified as the mighty God. So Yahweh will appear on earth, born as a son, incarnated as a child, taking on human flesh, recognized as the mighty God. Father of eternity. Prince of peace. This is what we have in our scriptures. Oops. This is what we have in our scriptures. So there you have it. And there's more. There's more on top of this, man. There's more on top of this. So the scriptures clearly teach that God will take on a human form. And Jesus, when he appeared, taught the disciples and showed them the scriptures concerning him and showed them how everything he's doing lines up with the scripture. There's no way around it. No way around it. No way around it. <sighs> Herman, I see you backstage. Can you, in the private chat, tell me who you are and what uh, background you come from? Please and thank you. Please and thank you. <laughs> Man, you guys are killing me in these comments. This is what we have, guys. This is what we have. Herman, I see you in the back chat. Are you uh are you there? It looks like your screen is blank. If there's any non-believers that would like to come up, come on up. Non-believers, come on up and ask and bring your objections. Bring your objections. Come on up and bring your objections. Even though it's the same stuff, we're, we are creatures of repetition. So it's all good. Okay, Herman, I see you now. Uh, can you tell tell me in the private chat uh, who you are and your background? Yeah, the Muslims never it's, it, they they watch they watch our streams every day, every hour, but it's as if they've never done it. It's as if they've never had conversations with with us before or seen these conversations before. That's how it is. So that's how it is, man. That's how it is. But the deity of Christ is is littered all throughout the Old Testament scripture. All throughout the Old Testament scripture. And there's not a single a single soul on this planet that can justifiably reject that. Not from the scriptures. You have to have a bias, a bias against Christ, in order to have that to come to that conclusion, and it literally ignore all the scripture. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. We can't have any Sunni or Shia Christians on stage. If you're going to be a Christian, you got to be an original Quran only Christian to join to join the panel. Otherwise, that ain't it. Otherwise, that ain't it. Herman, you are on stage. How are you? Uh, I'm good, man. How about you? 
Can you hear me? Man, I don't know what's up with these guys. It's like they have literally no life. They have no life but to troll. <laughs> All right, but well, that's it. All right, guys. Well, we don't have any any good takers here, so uh, you guys go ahead and do your thing. Um, you will be seeing me tomorrow again. We're going live tomorrow around the same time <clears throat> to see if we can get some more some honest discussions going. Hopefully, we can get some honest discussions going. If not, we'll just uh, have some uh, good open topics, um, bi biblical topics, and things of this nature. Um, so yeah, I'm glad you guys like the sweater working on the merch, going to get the links in and everything ready for you guys real soon. And, uh, you know, so stay, stay tuned and stay ready. We're getting, we're getting this stuff ready because this was dope. Omar did itself. With it. Oh, I got to show you guys the shirt. Give me one second while I, uh, while I show you guys this, get you guys the shirt. <clears throat> Okay. Ah. So here we go. So you got the shirt here. Little, it's a nice little button up. If it wasn't, if it wasn't too big, it would be perfect for me. But it's nice. It's nice material. Feels good. It's not hot. You know. It also has this on the back. So it's pretty, it's pretty dope. Pretty dope. So Omar outdid himself with this guys. God bless him and his, uh, and his sister for making that stuff. Um, oh, he says he's coming. Come on, man. Before I shut it down, you said you're coming. You better come on. You better come on and get it, get it together. Like you're the you're the one whose mic is not working. Safraz, what's up, man? The discussion with Bob yesterday is is posted. The discussion with Bob yesterday is posted. Um, if you're asking for. The conversation that came with the Muslim after that, I'm posting it after this. Like literally, it's going to be uploaded after this. You just got to create a thumbnail, and it'll be good. Just got to create a thumbnail, and it'll be good. How do these guys continue to just make new YouTube channels or something on the fly and keep on going on? But yeah. So if that's the case, that's it then. I'm not waiting anymore. All right, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow on the next stream. I love y'all. <laughs> as soon as I say that, guess who pops up? <laughs> guess who pops up? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. And what do you think of the sweater? What's happening? Eh? You want one? No, man. You don't I want one? You. You're part of the team. What do you mean, no? That top is going to be in hell soon. <laughs> <laughs> top is in hell burning away. You think so? In, in the lava. I think that I think that if you wear it, you know, you might be able to see the light one day. <clears throat> have you have you heard about the have you have you have you heard about that? Salam al Masih, my brother God Logic and everybody else in the audience. <laughs> Salam al Masih. <laughs> <laughs> and we need we need to get Safraz the sweater so we can come to the original Quran of the Christianity. 
three Muslims. I did drop the three Muslims literally refused to have me on. They literally refused. I've had pe people have hit them up on their comment section, hit them up on Instagram. They screenshotted and showed me their response. They will not debate me. They will not talk to me. They will not talk to me. They delete people's messages or comments who then who try to comment on their streams and say, hey, have God logic on, debate God logic and all that kind of stuff. They delete those comments. They do not want to talk to me. I don't I don't know what I did to them. I, I, I thought I was nice. I thought I was nice. But they don't want to talk to me. But I'll, go on there. Go, whenever you see them live, go in and hit them up and say, "Hey, guys, you guys talk about God logic." I know them guys. I know them guys. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll uh, have a word with them. I, I'll have a word with them. Tomorrow. Yeah, so, yeah. You don't in. know them, Safraz. I know one of the, one of them. I know one of the guys. I know. No, you don't. I know one of the guys. Not all of them. I don't. One of the guys. So far, you don't so know far, me. So you don't know who I am. Yeah, you don't know who I am. I am linked so up far, everywhere. Man. This is Safraz we're talking about. Avery, have you have yeah. you have you heard about that famous Catholic guy who just accepted Islam and now and now all the Catholics going crazy? I have no idea who he is. Then you got all, exclusive, Ross. It's all over. It's all over. It's just all over YouTube, man. Okay. Hilarion Heggy is from the he's he's from the USA and he's all over YouTube and the and the Catholics are all angry. How is he famous? His his name is Hilarion Hilarion Heggy. Famous right. priest from the from the from the USA Catholic. Never priest. heard never heard of him. Trust me, he's all over YouTube now. Splashed out everywhere. Yo, Avery, can you have me on? I'm blocked. Please. There, you should be able to come back. He's literally paying to ask if he can come back. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Safaz, I'm going to get you a sweater, man. Sweater. What size Large. are you? Huh? What size are you? Extra Large. small. Large man. I put some yeah, weight on. Large. We 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 we've we, we bloody got too much uh too much takeaways around here now. Too much takeaways <laughs> in rubbish around here. Donna kebabs, all that rubbish, man. Dang, that's tough. That's tough. All right. All right. Yeah. We'll get you. We'll get you a large man. You gotta um. You gotta email me your address so I can send you one, okay? <laughs> what are you giving him a large for, God Logic? You know it's an extra small. Yeah, he wants to feel big though. Avery, hey, when when I when are you coming out to speak his corner, man? Uh when I can, man. That's a whole You've been up a long back. time. You are scared, man. Oh, is that what it is? Why are you not coming down? Dustin? None of you man's coming down from the USA. You Come down no, you give me a place to stay? Of course we can, man. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm coming Anytime. down with Chris. Eh? I'm coming with Chris. You got room? Yeah, we are. We're both coming. You all come. Ring uh, Sam Sh Shimon as well. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll bring Sam. See if he can come. <laughs> Sam will not make it out alive. That's for sure. You too will, but he will not make it alive. <laughs> Our speakers. Can you, can you cook? Can you cook? Eh? Cook. Can you cook? Nah, man. The wife's cook, man. The wife he's cook around here. Wh which one of your wives is the best cook? Just got one wife, man. <laughs> Just got Yo, one wife. am I on? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, oh you're, you're back. Big. How are you, man? Why do you keep changing your name? Bro, I used, like, uh, I put you as, as Herman right now, so it's good. But anyways, can I, can I like, uh, ask you a few questions? Why, why do you keep changing your name? It's the same name, bro. No, you keep changing your name. What was it before? That's a great question. You keep changing it. Bro, trust me, it's the same thing. Like, it's the same name. Why do you, why, like, I really want to know why you keep doing that. Bro, I never changed it. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's the same name. Yeah. 
I don't know why you keep uh why you keep doing that. Like you uh you don't have nothing else to do or something or what? No, like I just want to get in. Like I don't want to show my full name. But you keep changing it. I don't know. Like I didn't change it at all, so I don't know. Like, where are you yeah. getting it from? Yeah. Well, I'm about to close the stream now. Okay, I'm but can fine. I ask you a few questions before? No, I'm about to close the stream. Bro. I'll be on tomorrow. Try to come on tomorrow. We'll have we'll have Chris ask you to uh, answer questions for you. Throw me so, under the bus, Avery. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but this stream has gone long enough. I'm about to close it up. I appreciate everybody for coming through. Appreciate everybody for coming through. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. So y'all come on. Let's have some, let's have a good time. Christians, you'll be allowed to come on and, and uh, ask questions and stuff like that tomorrow. All right. So uh, make sure you share the stream and everything like that. Put it in those uh Facebook debate groups, y'all, y'all be in. I know y'all be in there. So, yeah, let's do it. Okay, All right. bye, bye, bye. All right, Safras, I need, I, I need that, uh, that address, man, so I can send you one of these sweaters. When salam al Masih, everyone. Yeah, salam al Masih. Y'all take care. Y'all take care. It's God.